welcome to Winterberg in Germany and for long-time bobsledding fans it is a snowy vista uh, so often this track early in the season is fairly brown and dry but they've had quite a lot of snow in the area in the last week as we start our European campaign for the Wiesman FIBT World Cup racing we have a winter wonderland in the background hello everybody I'm Martin Haven getting ready for the first race of the women's skeleton World Cup here at Winterberg and it's a track that is regarded as a fairly straightforward one but it has several key areas for keeping your speed alive and as ever the first few corners may well decide whether or not you are at the top of the standings well, short run down into the first corner it narrows very dramatically into turn one always uh, risk of taking a bump on the outside of the wall down into turns two and three and skeleton's not carrying a lot of speed through here and now they start to go uphill it looks uphill on the pictures out of turn four it is you go over a little brow there's a second start hut there and then you start to drop down and from corner five you drop down about three or four stories they're right coming off the top of the roof of a tall house down into the Chrysler, this corkscrew corner, which uh, starting to fall out of favour with modern track builders, but of which uh, lots of the German tracks have one. Really picking up speed now, around 65 to 70 miles an hour as we come down. Corner 9 is one of the really difficult exits. Sets you up in the middle of the lower labyrinth, 10, 11, 12. And then the final corner, again, quite steeply uphill through the seal curve, the victory corner. The finish line awaits and then the run up into the loading dock at the top and it's Germany's junior Sonja Griebel who holds the track record here one of the few that has not been set in World Cup competition Anja Huber of Germany holds the start record but that, I don't know, might come under threat today Marion Thies, our World Cup points leader she has won a race this season as has Katie Ulinder, as has Sarah Reed. three world races, three different winners Lizzie Arnold and Canada's Melissa Hollings were tied in fourth place in the points ahead of world champion Anya Huber, the start record holder here. Well, you can see the athletes warming up at the top of the track. Lizzie Arnold getting in some time on the skipping ropes. And a uh, very different view today. Wednesday is the only day where there was bright, clear conditions and uh, lots of sun. It was a warm, balmy day. The others have been fairly snowy. So one of the challenges for the athletes today will be very different ice. Look at the air temperature, it's minus five. And actually, the way the wind's picked up in the last 10 minutes, that's pretty generous. I would say that if you're out, it feels a lot more like minus 10. Uh, ice temperature minus four degrees. And again, it's a lot colder than it has been during most of training. And of course, the one thing, as you know, from driving your road car that snow does, is it tends to make you skid around a lot. And a skeleton is no different. Well, World Cup points leader and race winner of Marianne Tace is our first of 24 sleds. Now that we've got to Europe, we welcome back uh, Romania. Their athletes are here, and we have a World Cup debutante as well from Russia. We'll get to them shortly. Let's get our fourth Wiesman Skeleton World Cup race of the season underway. Marianne Tace of Germany, she is our World Cup points leader. Not been out of the top half dozen places all season, and she won her first race last time out at Whistler in Canada. Well, this is a much shorter track, doesn't have the high speeds. Valentis may well produce the goods here. She has yet to win a World Cup race, though, in this Winterberg track. The start record is 5.32584. Valentis never the fastest at the start, but that was a decent first couple of corners. You can see how relatively slow the sleds look. That actually is because they are going relatively slowly up over the brow. Starting to now drop down through the Omega corner and really starting to pick up speed. They've gone from 60 to 90 kilometers an hour as they turn into the Chrysal. Got to control the pressure on the exit of the Chrysal to get a good run down to corner nine. And this is the one that they all look for. And that's not bad. Avoids the wall into 10. Nice looking run. She, of course, is setting the box bar for everybody else. And actually, she's looking very nice in control. When 125.6 is 78.1 miles an hour, 59.275 in training. This 
is a very different ice surface. The ice is much harder, much faster. Uh, yeah, a bit so-so with that. She's the first on the ice. She's the one who's telling everybody what the conditions are like. Drifts just a little, has to get in a fairly major steer. See the way she's leaning her body to get the runners to dig in on that left rear. And down into the labyrinth. Sarah Reed from Canada won our first World Cup race of the season at Lake Placid in the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York. Coach Duff Gibson yelling her off at the top. The temperature and the wind blowing across the top of the track there. They won't need much encouragement to get going. 5.45 gets away. We should see low fours are maybe very high. 5.3 starts. Sarah is one of the very quickest of the athletes who are the blocks. Good run through the first few corners. The momentum is absolutely vital at that stage. So six tenths of a second lead of the Marion Tess. Four tenths quicker at the start, and that's that extra momentum. 90 kilometers an hour is 56 miles an hour as she comes out of the Chrysler, picking up speed all the time. Let's see how much quicker the sled looks now. She is 58 kilometers an hour. Still half a second up on Marion Tiss. Very good run indeed from Sarah Reed. So the rankings. Still four tenths up. 77 and a half miles an hour on the finish curve, up here to the line, 0.34 up. So she started 0.39 quick in the barrier, she's finished 0.34. It's a very good run from her, she's given away experience on this track to the German girl, but not much. Okay, that was a neat looking slide, not fishtailing, not oversteering. Of course, the athlete having to react immediately to what they feel from the ice. Here is uh, Germany's Anja Huber, our 2008 world champion in women's skeleton. In sixth position in the World Cup rankings. She's a big starter. That may well help her on this track. This is a big flat starter's track. You see the bobsleigh German athletes really love to rip off a big start here. What can she do? She holds the start record 5.32 seconds. She's five years younger though, back in February 2007. Old from Bischoff Spielsen in Bavaria. 5.45 start, same as Sarah Reed. 61.2 now, it's a little quicker I think than Sarah Reed had in terms of momentum there, 38 miles an hour. Hundreds of a second in front. Just a little bit of skinning going on. She's got good speed as well, 56.5 into the Chrysler, that's the quickest we've seen from Andy Huber. And it's in the green on the top of she's in the lead by near a quarter of a second, out of quarter nine, so it's taken a good one. Place of nine from quarter nine, the noise you can hear is the chin of a helmet dragging on the ice, and that is fiction. As your enemy, you can hear it rattling hard on the ice there. Oh, and a new track record, 58.59. It was a good-looking slide. Didn't think it was going to be very good-looking, but she had big speed. She sees the number one, and she can see the big screen at the bottom. A track record for Anya Huber. That clearly felt as good as it looked. So, congratulations indeed, Herzlich Glückwunsch to Anja Huber, a new track record. Again, taking that big steer to line it up for the curling corner. One. Through the finish corner, look at the way she's tilting her head sideways. That's not to see where she's going, that's to stop her chin dragging on the ice. Better speed out of the Chrysler. Anja finding it down at the bottom. Anya Huber leads the race from Sarah Lee and Marion Tiss. Brings Shelley Rudman fourth away at the start. Won on this track last year. 
It's her first win at Winterberg, and that was the European Championship title went with that as well. shoots out the off run wow my goodness now watch the left foot there big steer going on and the right foot as well she got the knee up there's Richard Bromley his brother Kristen Shelley's partner will be racing later I know that uh, their daughter Ella is back home she'll be watching this off the tape later because today is Christmas Nativity Day well, now then, double junior world champion Kathleen Rorenz of Germany, World Cup rookie season for Kathleen. So this is only her fourth ever World Cup race, but of course a German slider, she'll know this win to well. She's one of the longer Ranger athletes. Not going to have the explosive oh, power from the Hoover away from the start. Not does she get 566. It's not a bad start at all. She lies fifth of our five sliders. Yeah, what went wrong there? Okay, now she's starting in the right hand of the two grooves. The pair of grooves there are cut to fit a bobsled. Skeletons aren't that wide, so only one set of runners or one runner goes in the grooves. See her there, steering hard in the finish <laughs> curve with her head. Yes, yes, yes. That's what it is, she says. Well, yeah. That is what it is. Race winner in Park City, Utah, Katie Ulander. She's won on this track before, back into the 2006 7 post Winter Games era. She's already with one win under her belt. Oh, and she's popped out of the Spurs. And that's a bit of a target. Didn't go very sideways, but it's with an absolute rupture of momentum. 5.89 getaway. You take a look again at the right here and see the sled. Just as the shot changes, pops out of the groove. And then it is slithering. Highly polished runners on sheet ice. She would remarkably well to control it and to get on it. What has that done to her speed? You can see the answer. Only 55.9 miles an hour. So it's crippled her speed, all of that energy in the run. She barely had any of it on board when she finally got to 
seven three. From there, I'm afraid we're not going to see a second win of the season for Katie Hewlett. None of the skeleton athletes have even vaguely ventured past the finish dock in training. Watch this. Now she, her hand is on the right, and you see the sled pop out of the groove on the left. All the pressure's on the right-hand runner, which is not in the groove. The left-hand runner is, and with the ice this hard. Um, that's a disaster. She explodes out of the blocks. You see Coach Tuffy Latour not thrilled with that, and Casey, well, these things do happen. Now they are sprinting over speed downhill. It's like running with scissors. Occasionally, it doesn't go well. All right, Mel, here we go. All right, Mel. Melissa Hollingsworth will join us in the announce booth for the men's race later. What will she have to talk about, I wonder? The girl from Calgary, Alberta. In Rides Rodeo during the summer. And for light relief, slides hit first down icy tracks in the winter. 5.57 start. And the fastest, 5.45s. But our race leader, Shelley Bodman, 5.58. It'll be Shelley that Melissa is trying to measure herself against. She has a slender lead from the start. Now, 13 hundreds of second point shows just how strong Shelley Bodman was. He knows the big thing four corners before he gets the big drop off corner five. Four tenths back. Well, Melissa is actually on what would have been almost track record pace before they woke up this morning. Now, she's going to be a long way back. Six tenths back as she gets out of corner nine. Nice and neat. Again, great form. Aerodynamic. Hands clapped to the side. Shoulders low. 124.7's decent speed at the bottom. Where is she going to finish? Fourth place, 58.94. But at the moment, we have, well, one athlete head and shoulders above the field, and the second athlete a substantial margin away from everybody else. Shelly Rubman leads by over half a second from Anya Huber, who in turn is 34 hundreds ahead of Sarah Reed in third. It's a massive margin. It wasn't quite so clear and cold and icy. If you looked at the timing figures, you'd say, okay, well, this is a snow race and somebody just got a break in the snow, but that is absolutely not the case. Shelley Rudman somehow hooked up perfectly this morning. There is Melissa Hollingsworth. Win, lose, or draw, she rarely looks anything other than happy. Or smiley, at least, let's say. Next up is her rookie compatriot, Cassie Horesh. Cassie, not out of the top ten so far this season. Of course, North American track she knows better. She has raced here before, though, in the second tier in Go! Go, 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 go! Cassie's advantages is she is a big, fast starter. 1300s back with significantly less experience on the track. Cassie Horesh doing a really nice job so far. As the athlete goes by, just look at the glistening ice. You do expect ice to shine, but this is really highly polished. Quicker, quicker. The temperature is not coming up. It is very cold outside. This ice is going to be electrified. Finish line roll 58-77. If you don't keep the finish corner has two pressures. Centrifugal force pushes you up and then it lets you come back down, then it pushes you up again. If you don't control how far down you drop, and she didn't, when it pushes you up, it keeps you up on the wall as the corner becomes the finish straight. And particularly with body slaves, you see them roll across the line. And a nine, we'll get a debris there in the track, affecting the athletes. 
Touch leg there. And the finish corner. Look at this. Drops way low. And then it's pushing her up. She's out of the corner. And it can only push her up into the wall. Now, luckily, no damage done. A big bruise on her left shoulder from that impact with the wall. Line. Not yet, but she will have by tomorrow morning. Top of the ice now with Lucy Chaffer of Australia. Had a really strong start to the season in North America. This could be a big, big year for the Aussies. Let's see what Lucy's got in terms of a start. 5.63. Certainly within shouting distance of our race leader, Shelley Rudman. Shelley Rudman leads with Anya Huber, Cassie Horesh in third, a few hundreds ahead of Sarah Reid of Canada. Again, another neat and tidy looking run from Lucy Chapper. Really coming on strong in terms of performance and experience. 90.5 kilometers an hour there, 56.2 miles an hour. Dropping out of the Chrysler corner and accelerating hard through corner nine. Nice exits. Again, listen to the extraneous noises, not too much here, finished curve, gets the line better, good exit there as well, avoids the walls, to take a little bit of a steer on the final corner, might have cost her a tenth maybe, 59-11, she's sixth ahead of Marianne Tace, a former winner on this track of course. The Australians... Uh, a number of years ago, targeted skeleton as one of those sports that you can make a big difference in for a small budget. Look at this, she explodes away from the blocks again. Her hand on the right, but look, it's the left-hand runner in the groove. She gets a nice transition. It's a good run. Love you. Lucy Chaffer of Australia in sixth position now on her Bromley built sled. Next up, Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain, our junior world champion. Third in the world at Lake Placid as well at the end of the season. Four World Cup races last year, she won two of them. She's yet to win this season. Ooh, gets a little bump out of the spur. They were recutting that right before the start of the race. 5.47, big getaway. Both Lizzie Arnold and Arnold comes next. Our very quick starters indeed. Lizzie now 1100s quicker at the start than Shelley Rudman, but still just 400s of a second in front. Takes a little steer there. 800s behind. She needs a good run through the Chrysler. Nice smooth line, little steer on the exit. How far behind will she be now? Tiny brush on the wall, three tenths back. Goodness me, can tell where Shelley Rudman found her speed. It was in the Chrysler. Half a second away, Lizzie Arnold still in third place. 123.9, good speed at the bottom. Takes the rub up the wall, not a big hit. Uh, fourth place, 58-8-1 slide from Lizzie Arnold. So that separates Cassie Horesh of Canada in third from her teammate Sarah Reed in, in now fifth position. Let's take a look here. Dips down. And then a little rub up the wall. Watch when she hits the wall. Leaves in the track there, but that's after the finish line. New website. Hi, Tommy T skis. <laughs> well, some uh, fans coming in to watch the action. First ten of our 24 sliders safely down. Shelley Rudman leads by half a second here in Winterberg.
Welcome back live to Winterberg in Germany. British flags flying at the top of the track as we greet our British athletes. Starter number 11, Donna Crichton. Donna, 27 years old, from originally in Portsmouth, now lives at Yeovil in Somerset. And second in last year's Intercontinental Challenge. Oh, just gets kicked out of the Spurs as a big skid, and that is the absolute worst first corner you can have. 700 faster at the start. They're going to have to attend to the end of that groove in the start area. It is kicking athletes out from the right-hand side. And that has cost her everything. Four tenths down as she climbs uphill towards corner five. What a nightmare. I think she's going to suffer more from that than Katie Ulender did from her sled popping out of the groove. That is going to be a warning to everybody else about using the right-hand start groove. Uh, maybe she's doing everything else right, but she has got no speed left on board. A horror story for her first run here. That might make it a little difficult staying in the top 20. Only the 20 fastest sleds go through in the heat two. 59-94. Andy Schmidt, the British coach, looking very disappointed with that. Not half as disappointed, I think, as Donna Bright will be. Well, a 5.51 start, but this is where it all goes wrong. She's in the right-hand groove. Now she gets loaded. She's fine. Watch what happens when they get to the end. Bink! It just bounces you out. And it, when you bounce, of course, the runner comes off the ice. And where it lands, you're out of control. You can't steer it when it's in the air. And they were recutting that groove earlier on, just before the race started, and they're going to have to do it again. We've now seen a couple of athletes there. She's got a bump on the elbow as well from the wall. We've seen a couple of athletes there thrown offline. Next up, Noel Pikers Pace of the USA. In the last decade, seven World Cup of races of ten have been run by either Germany, USA, or Canada. Noel won here back in 2004, and she's out as well. A start problem exactly the same as Katie Newlander. Well, her start is never the fastest part of her race. 5-6-0 doesn't reflect how quickly she could be going. And again, sideways, pinballing off the walls as she gets the bottleneck down into turn one. Look at that, three tenths behind. She will be the better part of a second adrift as she gets out of the crisis. Well, there's not going to be a second win in Winterberg for Noel Piker's pace. 91 kilometers an hour, 56.6 miles an hour out of the Chrysler. She's six tenths back. Well, she's got a great body for skeleton, long and lean, and that really works aerodynamically. Knows how to deal with the finished corner as well. Gets a great exit and mitigates the dramas. 58-81. That leaves her tied, I think, for fourth place. Exactly tied with Lizzie Arnold. But look at this. Now, she's got her hand over the sled, and it's only when she tries to load that it pops out. Look at it. She's shaking her head. No, oh, get away from the wall. Not on yet. It, it may be a while before we have 
Athletes mic'd up. I had a nine. It's a... I thought I, I was like, I'm in the kitchen. Wow, that load was rough. <laughs> yeah. Michelle Steele of Australia next. Second of our two Aussie sliders, originally from Innes Park in Queensland. Innes Park is a suburb of Bundaberg, and all rum drinkers will know where that is. Now, 26 years old occupational therapist, based in San Jose, go! California. Go, 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 go! Didn't race last season, but she's arrived back on the World Cup tour with the bang. 5.47, another good getaway, and she had no dramas going down into corner one. I'm not going to say that if you get a decent start, it's all done, because every element of this track has to be put together perfectly, which is what Shelley Rudman seems to have done, a good solid start, no dramas into corner one, and great lines everywhere else. The setup she chose on her Bromley sled really is working. Through the cries of Michelle Steele, quarter of a second back, top four place at the moment. <laughs> Teammate Lucy Chan is eighth, oh, and it all got a little scary in corner nine. Still in fourth place. And still in fourth place. Really good run at the moment. She's ahead of Lizzie Arnold and Noel Piker's pace. Great exit for the final corner, but drops to six. So there's just a little too much steering going on at the bottom. Sixth position, but she is only two hundredths behind the tie for fourth. So effectively, we can say there are three girls now covered by just the two hundredths of a second. That's the exit of nine. And that scorpion, as they call it, where one leg curls right back over the other, yoga style. That's going to cost her time. There's nine. Look above the woodwork covered in gouges from loads of crashes in the Europa Cup bobsleigh race in the last couple of weeks. A bit of a smile there from Michelle. <laughs> a sunny personality. Yeah, you did. <laughs> we need to wrap up warm here. It is minus five out, and there's a stiff wind. Next up then, Janine Flock of Austria. She's 23 years old from a little village no! just outside Innsbruck. Of course, that's where the Eagles track is. We'll be heading there after Christmas. She takes a different line down towards corner one. It's a nice straight line into it. Just a little bump up. And the exit. Two, three, three always seems so slow. And then climbing uphill, just five hundredths of a second off the lead of Shelley Rudman. So she's right in contention. Ninety point three kilometers an hour, fifty six point two miles an hour. Exits the Kreisel, good form there. <laughs> a little cheer as she comes down to corner nine from the uh, school kids at the side of the track. Again, you can hear her helmet chin piece chattering off the ice. 23.9, good speed, ninth place run, 59.09. It's not bad at all. Janine's still one of our younger athletes. Dizzy Arnold, like Janine, only 23 years old. I'm trying to think who else? Olga Potilitsina of Russia, still only 22. Not much wrong with either of those lines. Coach Martin Rettel will be pretty happy with those. There is Janine. Ninth place ahead of Lucy Chaffer and Marion Thies. In fact, she's ahead of two of the three German girls. Next up, Russia's Maria Oliver. 24 years old, with a degree from St. Peter's University, St. Petersburg no, University no, 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 in sports psychology. And the German coach in a Russian hat, Willi Schneider. She slides on a Dukur sled. Yeah, yeah. 
speed from her start, lots of power from Maria Oliver, 5.46 gets away. Still with a slender lead as she climbs over the brow towards quarter five. 2 hundredths of a second up, now she's got two tenths back. So it wasn't all about the Chrysler. Shelley Rudman was finding speed over everybody, everywhere. This is still on for a top six result. Oh, Scorpions out of corner nine. A little late with the steer there. Oh, and again, it's getting away from her. She's not readjusted to the speeds that she's finding down here that would not have been such in the snow. And again, little rough exit of corner nine, uh, of uh, the finished corner rather, but eight hundreds in front of Janine Flock of Austria. So she now moves into ninth place. Always worries me when you see athletes putting their hands down. I remember talking to Emma Lincoln Smith of Australia a few years ago. Arrived in practice and she said, oh, I've just broken my wrist. Have you done that? Putting her hands out, caught a lump of ice in the track. Scorpions off corner nine, and from there on down, she was just a tiny bit behind, close to the top of the ice there in nine. Yeah, a bit breathless at the bottom. Those last four or five corners really came at her fast. Catherine Eustace of New Zealand. Zealand's only representative in the Women's Skeleton World Cup. And such is the uh, budget of the tiny Kiwi organization. She was telling me the other day that uh, her race suit, the classic all black colors of New Zealand, uh, not actually her race suit originally. Jeanette Stoddard <laughs> raced, in raced in it for several seasons before handing it on to Catherine Eustace. <laughs> That's the job. Decent start from Catherine as well, 5.44. Very quick getaway. And just a tenth of a second behind. Again, she's one of the taller athletes in the women's field. So she's got a nice streamlined shape to cheat the wind. That's what you need here. A little steer on the exit of the Chrysler, still in the top ten. Twelfth place out of corner nine, but a decent exit. And that will stop her losing more time to the girls that were quicker at the top of the track, perhaps. Oh no, goodness me, really drifting away. Now again, not many mistakes, not a lot of steering going on. But 14th place of 59.39, the speeds were not there. Again, that might suggest that she might have gone with a runner choice for warmer, softer ice. Well, the way it works is the harder and the colder the ice, the narrower, narrower a runner and the smaller a contact patch you can run because, like stiletto heels, it doesn't then dig into the ice. Shelly Rudman is our race leader from Anya Huber, Cassie Horesh in third, ahead of Great Britain's Lizzie Arnold, former race winner Noel Piker's pace, tied with Lizzie in fourth spot, 200s ahead of Michelle Steele of Australia. So behind the top three, a, uh, behind the top two, a very tight battle for the bronze medal position. This is our 17th of 24 sliders. Joske Leconte of the Netherlands. And uh, the ski season starts here this weekend in Winterberg as the wind blusters snow across the start area. And she'll be running into the teeth of a bit of a gale there. 564. And that might possibly have chipped about a tenth of a second off her potential start speed. Maybe not that much. There are so many Dutch skiers come to the ski areas of Winterberg. This is uh, colloquially known as the Dutch Alps. There will be plenty of orange in town this weekend. 0.72 back, Joske Leconte. It's going to put her in 13th, 14th place at the moment. Right on the heels of Marian Tis and Kathleen Lorenz of Germany. Bottom of the pile are the sliders who had drivers at the start, Katie Lulender and Donna Crichton. And now a 
add to that, Joska Lacant, who again is not finding the speed she needs. 15th position, so she's ahead of Katie Ulenda and Donna Crichton. And it is possible that either or both of those girls may not make a second heat because of those dramas at the start. And the British coaches helping Joska. <laughs> A touch late on the exit there, didn't really flop off the wall. It's an old track here at Winterberg, and speeds were definitely different when it was built. The athletes, particularly in the bobsleds you see, are using a lot more height in the corners than ever they were in the open fire arm and sled days when the track was built. Coach Billy Schneider, you just saw his back, and holding the sled for Olga Potilitsina. Yet to repeat her maiden win in the Women's Skeleton World Cup. Wonder if she'll be able to do it again this season. Slight, petite, young 22-year-old athlete. She doesn't have a power start, but she does have what Marion Thies does, which seems to be a feel for where the speed is in the track. She has not had a good season so far, hence her ranking. She's outside the top 10 in the 10 to 20 group. 18 for the World Cup standing so far. She's outside a top 10 run at the moment. Exits the Kreisel, little rocky. Head up as well, you can see her chin is not low. She's got a head up seeing where she's going and that's an indication again of her relative lack of experience she's only been sliding three or four years now, if you've been racing cars say for that period of time you'd have had many 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 hours on track In skeleton you really don't you only get a few minutes a week 59 four nine slide for olga and that puts three athletes behind her she's in 15th of our 18 sleds so far but you don't have to speak Russian to understand that body language. It was one of her better exits. Plum centre down the track. Good line into corner nine. So it was okay. Look at how far up does she get? A little extra height at the end, but not too much to control. I do love the way that the athletes play with the camera to their friends and family back home. Next up from Latvia, Lelda Priedjulana. And she is having her first full World Cup season. Made her debut last year. Of course, trains with Martins and Thomas Dukos and her father Dennis, the Latvian coach. 547 get away. She is our youngest athlete in the field, just 19 years old. Hundreds off the leader. It's a pretty decent run so far. She did start 1100s quicker than Shelley Rudman. So yes, she's losing quite a lot of momentum. Good form. Again, as you'll see from both the Ducours brothers. Bit of a steer going on there, you saw the feet working hard. 0.87 back. She's just dropped out of the top 10 positions. This will leave her dangerously close to the bottom of the pile. 16th place. Okay, still three sleds behind her. So that should see her safely into the second heat. Not by much, but it doesn't have to be by much. Just enough will do. 400 of a second quicker than Joska Leconte. 16th place for Again, look, heels together, toes off the ice. She knew where she was going, knew the line was good. No panic going on in either of those two corners. Well, this is our 20th slider, Marina Giordoni of Switzerland, former bob bobsled brakewoman. 
And after this, the remaining four sliders will have to knock somebody out to get into the second heat. Only the fastest 20 go in heat two. Gumberger, Grunberger, the coach of the Swiss team. Oh, just a little kick sideways out of that left hand groove as the athletes see it. 5 5 0 start. That just leaves her 8 hundreds away from the race leader as she loads onto the sled. Now 18 hundreds back from Shelley Rudman. Half a second back, 55.8 miles an hour going into the Chrysler. Good exit, nice, neat, tidy lines. No panic steering going on. Good off nine. Let's take a bit of a steer, but not the big hit. 15th place at the moment on split times. 76.7 miles an hour into the finished corner. Will this be a top 15 run? It will. 59.46 safely into the race. Our 20th slider. It was a good run from Marina Giardoni. She should be pretty happy with that. No major dramas. And again, the British coach is helping out with some of the other athletes. A smiley face at the bottom of a successful run. Again, only converted the last three or four years to skeleton from bobsled. So she's got plenty of power. Give away experience in driving the track, though, to some of her rivals. Nevertheless, 15th place. And Donna Crichton in 20th is now in the danger zone. Four more sleds to go. First of whom is the second of our Swiss girls, Barbara Hosch. Well, Barbara with more experience than teammate Marina. Lives in Celerina. It's the village to which the Samaritz bobsleigh track travels as it goes down the valley. 6-0-3 getaway. Speaks a handful of languages. Highly qualified. So they're built by Canada's Ryan Davenport. At the moment, not with the speed to get into the top 20. At the Chrysler, she's in 21st place on the split times. And at the end of the season, she'll be hoping to compete in San Maris for the second time after the World Championships for Skeleton. There is the uh, Samaritz Crest to Run women's race, which she's won three times. 1.93 back, still 21st place. And she will not get a second heat here. That's a 60.39 slide for Barbara Hosch. Again, I'm wondering whether some of the athletes have got fatter runners on. We're expecting. Slightly warmer conditions, maybe the threat of snow. The forecast snow yesterday, it didn't really arrive. Yesterday afternoon, it cleared up quite a lot. And maybe some of the forecasts were saying there'll be snow this morning. There's coach Mickey Grunberger. Straight into the weighing room for athlete and sled. Next up is the first of our two Romanian athletes, Delia Ivas, returns to the World Cup. 24-year-old sports club manager, started sliding back in 2005. And 2011-12 was her World Cup rookie season. Unfortunately, she didn't manage to make the second cut in any of her races. Now, she didn't slide in North America, she was sliding in... Uh, second and third tier races here in Europe instead, which budgetary reasons dictated. Let's see what she can produce. A 5.95 start, she might have a chance of getting into the second heat here. Twenty-first place at the moment. 88.8 kilometers now, 55.2. 
55.6 would have been decent speed, 56 would have been good speed into the Chrysler. Still away from the top 20 that she needs to get into the second heat. This is doubly difficult for the less experienced sliders. If you don't get into the top 20, you miss out on another run down the track, so you lose in experience, and it's the lack of experience predominantly that is stopping you getting into the top 20, so it's a, a vicious circle. Six runs in training, and then potentially two in the race. That's eight in total for the season. 21st place through the finished corner, trying to keep the speed alive. Timing Bean is right there at the exit to the corner. There is Delia. There's our two Romanian athletes. She's 22nd. So Donna Crichton in 20th, still in the race. As we get to our World Cup debutante, Yelena Nikitina of Russia. Yelena, just 20 years old from Moscow. And raced in the Intercontinental Cup last year, having started skeleton in 2000, three years of sliding in Europa Cup and then the Intercontinental Cup. And the Russians looking at her as being the new next generation. And look at that start, 5.39. That is the fastest in the business. Just 700s away from the track record set by Anya Huber. Tenth of a second of a lead. Wow, this is electrifying stuff from Yelena Nikitina of Russia. 19 hundreds of a second faster than Shelly Rudman. She's now 16 hundreds back going into the Chrysal, but still top four. Now, how much speed will she lose? Let's listen. Look, her head's up, but her shoulders are down. And no chin dragging on the ice. You can't hear the toes either. This could be a top six run. No, she's drifting away. Eighth place now. The finish line can't come soon enough. Good exit. Tenth position for her first ever World Cup slide. Billy Schneider looks happy with that, and so he should. Donna Crichton won't be because she is now out of the race. Uh, it's not often that an athlete 23rd out of 24 will bump somebody who's uh, a regular top six finisher, but that is what has happened. And there is Yelena Nikitina of Russia. She was a little ray of sunshine when she came in for the headshots into the TV truck the other day. Doesn't speak much English, but uh, international language of speed is universal. Look at that. Top speed before Omega, 61.5. That's off a 5.39 second start. And I said we might get into the low 5 point th high 5.3s. Was not expecting Nikitina necessarily to be one of those. Well, our 24th and final slider is again from, Mar uh, from Romania, Maria Mazilu. Old student and World Cup rookie last season. She was sliding in the Intercontinental Cup. She did compete in the Winter Olympic Games in Vancouver, though, so she has been on a few big stages. This is her big World Cup debut season. Let's see if she can make it into. The top 20 safely, only 12 yeah, fastest, oh, not only 12 fastest, 12 fastest at the start, up into the top 10, now in ninth position. What a good run she's having. Good exit, little bit of a skid, but she keeps the speed alive. She's in 13th place, off nine. Oh, don't let it all drift away. Don't panic, you're on top of this. It's working well. Still in 13th place, she's working hard with the toes to control it on the run into the finished corner. That's her in the race, definitely, 59-4-0. That was a good run, yes, absolutely. But it does bounce out Katie Ulender as well. Wow, former winner on this track will not make the second heat. Katie Ulender and Donna Crichton are two of the four who will be spectators for heat two. And Maria Mazalu of Romania, 
she makes it into heat two, 16th fastest run. <laughs> Great stuff. So, Delia Evas there in the black jacket offers her congratulations. Delia doesn't make it into the second heat, but Maria really does. But the question is not what she can do, but what anybody can do about this woman. Shelly Rubman, our race leader. Started 5.58, that's only the 15th fastest start in the field, but from there on, she ignited the afterburners and just blew them away. Anya Huber had already set a track record of a third fastest start. Shelley shattered it off a 15th fastest start, and she leads by a massive margin. In a sport that's measured in the hundreds of a second, she leads by 53 hundredths of a second over Anya Huber, who in turn is a third of a second ahead of the tight battle with Cassie Horesh, Lizzie Arnold, Noel Piker's pace and Michelle Steele. And the top ten is packed full of potential changes, including our World Cup rookie, Yelena Nikitina of Russia. Yoska Lecomte will head the 20 down to one second heat. She'll be first off as they go in reverse order. But on the sidelines, Katie Ulender, a former winner here, and Donna Crichton, among the four who do not make heat two. Well, you can make heat two. Join us at half past as we come back live with more action from Winterberg. Women's Skeleton World Cup race number four in the Beastman season. What is going to happen in the second heat? There's only one way to find out.